In Florida, the state agency that provides oversight for long-term care facilities and all other licensed health care facilities is the Agency for Healthcare Administration. You may know it as its acronym, ACA. Mary Mayhew is the secretary of ACA. She has spent her entire professional life in health care administration. And Ms. Mayhew joins us live today by Skype. Secretary Mayhew, good morning. Great to have you with us. Good Thank morning. you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Sure. Well, let's begin with a very basic kind of a broader question. Uh, Florida is in the process of reopening. May 18th, as you know, is the target date for South uh, Florida for Miami-Dade and Broward counties. But here we've got 40, 44,000 uh, people have been infected, over 1,700 deaths. Are we going too fast here? What we have said all along is that we have had a laser beam focus on protecting our most vulnerable. So even as the governor has announced his approach to reopening our state, he has continued to maintain this critical focus on protecting our most vulnerable. In fact, um, we have continued to issue directives to nursing homes, to assisted living facilities regarding transfer protocols. We have mandated that hospitals must test anyone in a hospital that would be discharged to a long-term care facility regardless of symptoms. That remains front and center in our efforts as we seek to protect our frail elderly throughout the state. Secretary, let's talk a little bit about that in detail. As of what the last chart that, that we saw here, 665 fatalities from COVID in Florida's long-term care facilities. That's 40% of the fatalities of COVID-19 are in these places. The governor closed them to visitors in mid-March, I wanna say. So since mid-March, no visitors, families have been allowed inside and yet, the fatality rate, the positive rate is still climbing. So I heard the governor say this week he wants to be able for visitors to go in, but what, what kind of protocols are not in place that, the, that these positives keep rising, even though is it the staff is the only entities in and out? Well, speak to that, please, if you would, of the protocols of why this is continuing. Right, and let's, I just wanna, from a statewide perspective, we have over 4,000 facilities in our state serving over 150,000 individuals. And as you all know, uh, if you are in a nursing home, uh, you have um, significant needs. The frontline staff are helping you to bathe, to uh, be fed, to, uh, to go to the bathroom. The level of contact that is provided by amazing frontline staff, the challenge we face uh, this is a, uh, a, as we all know, uh, an incredibly unprecedented public health emergency. This is a deadly virus. And you're right. Um, we stood guard at the doors of these facilities in all of the efforts that we implemented to uh, eliminate visitation, to require extensive screening of employees. But what we know, uh, there are individuals who are asymptomatic that are still able to transmit the virus. And again, with that level of uh, contact, it has been incredibly difficult uh, to keep this virus out of these facilities. And once it's in, you are talking, in particular uh, in Miami-Dade and Broward, you have facilities, the average age is 40 years. Uh, you have a number of individuals who are in semi-private rooms. So it is incredibly difficult to prevent the spread, which is why we have been partnering with hospitals uh, in the counties to support timely transfers out of these facilities so two cases do not become 20 or five become 50. That is critical and that has been a huge focus of ours. Yeah. Secretary Mayhew, this isn't exactly in your bailiwick. That is to say, maybe it's a question more properly put to the Department of Health and the governor, and we've tried to speak to the governor about it, but you know, the state, uh, especially the Department of Health has been very closed mouth They've been reluctant to share uh, information about 
how people have died of COVID-19, especially in nursing homes. It only took a threat of a lawsuit from the Miami Herald, the Tampa Bay Times, to finally get that information released. Why has the state sort of tried to hide these figures, which should be a matter of public record? So the state has not uh, hidden data. The website that the Department of Health launched and the data that has been put out there has been far more transparent than many states across the country. Uh, we have worked to release information that has been meaningful in helping to inform not only the public's uh, information about what is happening around our state, but to help inform decision making uh, related to our hospitals, our nursing homes, to make sure that the data was credible, uh, that it was timely. Uh, I oversee the emergency status system. Uh, we've helped to support the release of data. Uh, certainly, we were focused, as you know, initially on uh, managing the surge capacity in the state, making sure that there were available beds, monitoring the supplies of PPE. All of that data is also submitted by our long-term care facilities. And we have been focused on making sure that that data has been uh, available to support our statewide efforts and to provide the public with meaningful information. Secretary, the uh, you mentioned PPEs. I was gonna ask you about the uh, the websites that uh, Jared Moskowitz at the uh, emergency management in the state has put out numbers of PPEs sent to specifically these long-term care facilities. We're talking 10 million masks and a million gloves and hundreds of thousands of gowns and masks. And yet we here at Local 10 are getting reports from some long-term care facilities that they just don't have what they need. If you would speak to that disconnect. Well, I think it's really important to understand that the level of infection prevention and control that has been required to combat this deadly virus often exceeds what our nursing homes and our assisted living facilities have been expected to adhere to. This is a, when you think about when the CDC first talked about what was necessary, the use of negative pressure rooms, N95 masks, that is not standard practice in these nursing homes and certainly not in our assisted living facilities. So we have worked diligently to provide personal protective equipment to these nursing homes and assisted living facilities. The federal government recently deploying resources directly to nursing homes to provide uh, needed supplies, masks and gowns in particular. So that has been a huge challenge. The commercial supply chains that hospitals typically have, and even those supply chains have been challenged throughout this uh, public health emergency and our response, our nursing homes have not had that same level of access to uh, commercial supplies. So this has been a huge effort, not only to meet the needs for those supplies, but then to train the staff in these facilities on the appropriate use of that PPE. Yeah, if I could, Secretary Mayhew, in just 10 or 15 seconds, you were part of the plan with Jared Moskowitz, the governor, and uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to build these emergency hospitals in West Miami-Dade on a fairgrounds, the Miami Beach Convention Center. I believe there's one in the central part of the state. Thankfully, they were never used, but you think it, it was worth the time, effort, and money to go ahead and build those emergency facilities? You know, it's always um, easy looking in the rearview mirror uh, to reflect on. The reality is we did not know. Uh, we saw what was playing out in other parts of the world. We saw uh, what was happening in New York. So thankfully, not only were we prepared, but we did not see the significant surge in our hospitals. However, we do know that we have increasing need for a level of isolation and clinical monitoring for our frail elderly in some of these nursing facilities where they will need to be transferred. So we are continuing to look at alternative sites, skilled nursing facilities that can be dedicated COVID-19 right. facilities. We have some in other parts of the state. We are working 
to set those up in Miami-Dade and Broward and Palm Beach so that we can have additional facilities so when these transfers are needed, uh, if they don't require hospital level of care, that we can provide appropriate settings for that isolation and recovery and clinical monitoring. So we can absolutely save lives. Yeah, well, saving lives is what it's about. We thank you for all your hard work and that of your people at ACA, the Agency for Healthcare Administration. Mary Mayhew, thanks very much.